Hi, my name is Xavier Duran with the Lyle Library District, and today we will be discussing Seed Starting. Uh, this program is called Seed Starting 101. What this presentation will cover uh, will be why seed start, selecting seeds, seed starting, transplanting, and garden planting. Why seed start? I'll go ahead and give you the reasons why I start seed starting. I joined the Lyle Library District in 2015, a year before that, uh, my predecessor, who was working at the Lyle Library District um, before, uh, before I came to the Lyle Library District, uh, started a seed library that became incredibly popular. When I got here, I wanted to familiarize myself with the seed starting process and gardening in general. So that's how it came about seed starting as a means of you can say professional development. And over time, it sort of became a, a fun little hobby that I will have uh, towards the, the, the end of, of the frigid weather here in the Midwest. Uh, I'll also give you a couple reasons why uh, people uh, seed start. Uh, cost. Even with equipment, it's uh, it's cheaper to start from seed than purchasing uh, mature plants. And I will like emphasize over time, when you start seed starting, um, it is kind of an investment, uh, including uh, containers, the seeds themselves, soil, uh, a lot of tools that you don't are would be would be helpful um, in your success in seed starting. Um, but this is an investment and it does pay off over time. Uh, control. Uh, you know what you're planting and using on your plants. Uh, there are several, uh, many um, individuals who are worried about what goes into uh, their plants, into their, uh, into their vegetables. This way you know what you're treating your plants with uh, to have peace of mind. Uh, experience. Uh, many people uh, seeds start to understand the agriculture and the labor behind growing food. Um, uh, gardening, uh, seed starting will be will be a labor of love. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, it's it's fun. It's um, also very tedious. Uh, it requires a lot of TLC. And uh, that's kind of gives you a better understanding of, of agriculture and the labor behind growing food. And of course, once the tedium and um, the difficulties subside, uh, it just becomes a really neat hobby to have. And lastly, once you become experienced, you get to experiment. Once you get the hang of growing, you can experiment with uh, scheduling, where uh, you purposely uh, plant one variety of seeds uh, before the other. Um, and this is to avoid what's called cross-pollination. And uh, that's a topic for another time. But it's just to avoid um, a weird mutation of of seeds that doesn't produce the the vegetable or the fruit or the flower that you want. Um, this is also an opportunity to uh, play with new varieties of plants. So selecting seeds, uh, this will be one of your most important tasks, and you need to sit down and ask yourself, um, what do you want to eat? Uh, there's no reason behind planting. Um, a type of vegetable that you hate, um, grow something that you'll be uh, excited and having sprout out from the ground and uh, basically enjoy the, the fruits or vegetables of your labor. Also understand your garden. If you notice that your garden can't handle certain vegetables or vegetation or plants, again, uh, don't select those seeds because um, what will just It'll, it'll be a very fetal mess. And then, of course, lastly, grow what excites you. Um, for me, it will always be the on a warm uh, summer night uh, towards dusk when you can smell uh, the very um, plant-like vegetable vegetal smell of, of tomatoes. It almost smells uh, very coppery. And... Um, uh, for me, that, that gets me super excited with the imagery of, of the setting sun. So select seeds that excite you, select seeds that you want to eat or admire, and select seeds that your garden can handle. 
Uh, the next thing that you want to consider are open pollinated seeds uh, and or heirloom seeds. Uh, I will say that heirloom seeds have to be open pollinated. However, not all open pollinated seeds are heirloom seeds. And I'll discuss the difference um, in a second between these two. Um, but what you want to do is look for seeds that specifically say open pollinated. And what open pollination means is that the seeds have been uh, naturally pollinated by uh, natural means. So by wind, by bees, by animals, by birds. Uh, open pollination is uh, more genetically diverse and can acclimatize uh, to the climate year after year. Uh, this also allows the plant to slowly adapt to growing conditions uh, in the area. And um, kind of next, the kind of opposite of open pollination is, uh, uh, is hybridization or uh, hybridized seeds. And these are seeds that most of the time are, uh, almost all the time, are uh, man-made creations. Uh, folks will uh, genetically breed a particular seed uh, to become resilient towards uh, a different climate. Um, not necessarily over time, but kind of uh, in a very short period of time. And this makes that seed unstable. So one year, once you uh, grow that uh, cross um, hybridized seed, it's going to produce the flower or the fruit or vegetable that you want. However, the year after, you might get a different variation or even a mutation. It's not consistent as open pollinated seeds or heirloom seeds. Heirloom seeds are, are kind of fun. Heirloom seeds have been traced, uh, can be located to a family. And I believe an heirloom seed is an open pollinated seed that has been passed uh, passed along the family for about 50 years or so. So in considering uh, selecting seeds, look for open pollinated seeds and or heirloom seeds. Uh, those would be your best bet uh, for success and to avoid any uh, interesting mutations that might occur when you're growing your, your vegetables or your flowers. And up screen, on the screen, I have a couple of uh, uh, vegetables that and, and annuals, flowers that uh, are easy to start. Um, we have um, some easy vegetables, broccoli, a lot of lettuces um, do well in the winter, um, pumpkins, zucchinis, uh, as well as marigolds, uh, flowering tobaccos, uh, salvias, uh, sweet alyssiums, uh, zinnias as well. Uh, I'm not telling you to uh, veer um, to stay within this list. Uh, rather, these are the plants that will uh, give you the greatest chance of uh, successfully growing. And um, what you want to do is um, just kind of make yourself make your uh, foray into seed starting a success. And then once you become knowledgeable and um, experience with seed starting, then go ahead to some vegetables or certain flowers that might need some uh, extra TLC. Again, uh, gardening is a very, it's a, it's, a, it's a labor of love, but the rewards are absolutely wonderful. Uh, once you have the seeds selected, uh, read uh, the seed packets. Uh, the seeds that we usually get from our library um, come from two companies. One is uh, Baker Creek, uh, Baker Creek um, Seed Company, as well as Seed Savers uh, in uh, Decora, Iowa. And um, these seeds are open pollinated, and some of them are also heirloom. And um, what I like about the Seed Savers packaging is uh, they have a very simple, easy to read instructions. Uh, you'll see that it says start indoors eight week before last frost. Um, it will also tell you the germination uh, date. It will also tell you that whenever you need, to, when you need to plant um, outdoors, when you're ready to get uh, get there, uh, it'll tell you the number of uh, inches uh, to uh, distance them uh, to avoid some form of competition or resource stealing, and also the type of light that you uh, will need this plant uh, to grow successfully. And of course, it will tell you instructions uh, such as sow seeds uh, one quarter inch deep 
and um, it will tell you what type of soil uh, these seeds will germinate best. I believe these are uh, uh, Traveler's Jalapeno, uh, jalapeno Peppers. Uh, so again, read your packets. Um, it will tell you the best time to plant them, the soil type, spacing, and the date to maturity. Uh, now seed starting. Uh, what you'll need is soil. And uh, what I want you to do is make sure that you get a pre-mixed seed starting um, will be best for seed starting, especially when you're doing it indoors. Um, it, the reason why you want something that's sterile, that's in a bag, is uh, to avoid disease or infection. Again, you want to make uh, the opportunity for yourself to succeed in your first foray into seed starting a success. Uh, so pre-mixed seed starting mixes are the best. It will say on the on the bag seed starting mixes. Get those specifically. You'll find potting soil uh, we'll use uh, further down the line, but you want seed starting mixes. Uh, these won't be uh, nutrient heavy um, and that will uh, help your seed uh, grow. Uh, pots. Uh, while you're at the Home Depot or your Menards or uh, your local nursery, um, you're more than welcome to purchase uh, pots from the store. Uh, what some people want to, uh, or what some people have been doing is making their own pots uh, using newspaper. If you do a, a quick search for uh, newspaper pots, uh, you'll find a lot of gardening blogs that will show you how uh, to make little newspaper uh, pots, which require some additional steps. Uh, but for those who are uh, environmentally conscious and who don't want to add more clutter or purchase things, uh, this is a way to go. Uh, also think about uh, plastic containers that you have, uh, food containers as well. Uh, you can use yogurt containers. You can use um, uh, chip containers if you have them. Uh, a lot of some um, uh, some blogs will also show you how to uh, make containers out of uh, pop bottles. Something that you want to do with those containers is add drainage. So make sure that uh, you put uh, your your homemade pots. Um, add uh, holes to your homemade pots and then put those pots into if you have a um an aluminum uh, uh roasting pan go ahead and put those in there just to catch any water there are uh seed starting trays that you can purchase from your local nursery or from any of the big box stores um light source so uh, go ahead and find a sunny spot in your home. Keep in mind, uh, these might take up a good chunk of real estate uh, within uh, your apartment or your home, uh, but you need to find a sunny spot in your home. Um, if you're kind of uh, live in an apartment where you do not have adequate lighting, um, something that you want to invest in, again, <laughs> the initial cost will be, again, the initial cost is an investment, uh, some artificial lights. Um, there are uh, some safe LED grow lights that you can get, again, from your nursery or from your big box store. Uh, these are lights with a uh, spectrum that tries to mimic uh, sunlight. And um, what I like to do now is... Uh, seeds like to get about eight hours of sunlight, and then uh, that's when they're taking in sun, and then eight hours of darkness, that's when they're they're processing food. Uh, so I have a little timer that I got from my hardware store and set it for eight hours, and without even thinking about it, the light will, will shut off once uh, the timer reaches its eight hours, and then it'll go into eight hours of darkness. Uh, another consideration, I put this down as other, but I find that it's becoming necessary. Uh, a small fan to encourage airflow and um, a warming pad. Actually, you really, um, if your uh, home, your apartment is warm enough, you really don't need that. Um, I would strongly suggest a fan. And the reason why you want a fan is to avoid something called dampening off. And um, basically dampening off is just mildew that's on the surfaces of the soil. This will um, kind of corrode your seed and not make your uh, seed starting journey a, a huge success. Uh, so these are a couple of things that, again, uh, small initial investment, um, which over time will, will pay for itself. Uh, so well, once you have all of your items, you want to go ahead and um, start preparing. 
And again, follow the instructions on your on your um, on your seed packet. Uh, majority of the time, you want to seed start anywhere between six to eight weeks before the last frost. And um, if you um, do a search for um, uh, six to eight weeks last frost and then your zip code it will give you a date when that last frost will be and that will give you enough time to start seeds um and you want to start six to eight weeks before that uh what you'll go ahead and do is uh, uh take out your soil and put it into your uh, seed starting trays or into any of your containers and then what you want to do is moisten uh moisten the soil uh, a day before. Uh, that's just to make sure that the water is uh, soaked in properly and absorbed by the soils. And uh, then just gently pack in the soil into the container. Uh, once you do that, uh, you'll go ahead and plant your seeds at the depth recommended by the seed package. If um, it doesn't give you a recommended depth to plant your seed, uh, what you want to do is a good rule of thumb is uh, the depths will be twice the size of the seed. Uh, so if it's like a, um, a sunflower seed, uh, you have you can you can dig a pretty good hole um, to uh, bury it in. If it's like um, some lettuce seeds or even some herb seeds, all you have to do is just sprinkle it on top of the soil and that's about it. The next thing you want to do is once you uh, uh, bury your seeds is you pack the soil gently uh, just so that it makes contact with the soil. And uh, something that I found, it's something that's been recommended by a lot of gardening blogs, is to water um, from, um, from uh, spray bottles or um, bo um, bo bottom feed. Um, I usually get uh, seed starting trays where all I have to do is pour water um, in the little tray. And what it does is uh, the, the soil, once it gets dry, it will, observe, it will absorb the necessary water uh, to keep the soil and the seed moist. Um, some, or you can use a spray bottle, but make sure that the tops of your trays, wherever uh, there isn't any, um, uh, I should say, plastic or material, make sure that you wipe that off, make sure that that's dry. The reason why uh, you want a bottle feed or to use a spray bottle is to avoid any unnecessary water that can make it into a breeding ground for um, mildew or bacteria. Again, dampening off is a uh, big killer to seed starting. Transplanting. Um, so there are two times when you want to transplant, uh, when seedlings outgrow their container and you need to put them into a larger container and uh, when you're going from that container uh, to your garden. And there is a, um, a method to uh, transplanting, um, which we'll cover now. Uh, so how you wanna transplant is you want to pair your larger container with moistened potting soil. So um, this is when we search from um, the very fibrous seed starting uh, medium soil to uh, a potting soil. Um, oftentimes the potting soil is a nutrient rich environment that will continue to help uh, the, the plant grow. Once you prepare your large container with a uh, with moistened potting soil, you want to go ahead and uh, dig up a hole to accommodate the the, um, the plant to transplant it. Uh, what you want to go ahead and do is um, when you're removing the plant from its container, what we what I like to do is squeeze the container just to kind of loosen it up. And um, what that will do is um, any roots that are attached to the walls of the container will detach or loosen up. And then I will uh, lift the plant, uh, usually using a, a pencil or a label stake uh, under the plant and lift off. Uh, what you'll see is um, if it's uh, maybe carrying too much dirt over, what you can do is gently uh, brush off some of the dirt uh, being very careful with the roots. Uh, oftentimes this is kind of called a root ball. And then uh, what you want to do next is place it into the container, add soil, and um, immediately uh, bottle feed with water or use a spray bottle. 
Uh, transplanting can be very traumatic to the plant. Um, it's basically in shock when you remove it from its, uh, its medium um, into a new container. And so you want to feed it and uh, return it to um, return to your artificial grow light or to the sunny spot in in your your apartment in your home or not yet into the garden uh, for a little longer. Now we're getting into the gardening part. Uh, at one point, um, your seed packet will suggest when to uh, uh, bury it into. Um, into the garden. Um, a good rule of thumb is um, after the, the, the date of frost has passed, after the danger of frost has passed, and um, you have consecutive days of consecutive warm days, whereas the soil has started to warm up, is a good indicator uh, when to transplant from the large containers to your garden. Before you garden plant, you need to do something called harden off. Uh, right now, we ha we've given our plants the ideal growing environment. We've uh, regularly watered it, watered it, gave it eight hours of light, eight hours of darkness. Um, it, it's our baby that's going to go into a very harsh world. So we need to make sure that it has the necessary tools um, to uh, survive in, in, in the wild. Uh, so what you want to do is uh, gradu gradually introduce your plants to the fluctuating temperatures of outside. So what you want to do is take your tray with uh, your um, very hardy juvenile plants outdoors uh, for the first couple of days, uh, place in the shady spot um, for a couple of hours, um, just to kind of get used to uh, the wind, uh, the, the intensity of the sun, and just the environment. And then after just a couple of hours, return it inside. Um, to kind of harden off again to uh, get it acclimatized. And um, after a couple of days, increase the amount of time uh, that you uh, keep the plants outside. This can be an hour, an hour, every so often, uh, to the point that you can leave them outside all day and night, uh, knowing full well that they've hardened off. Again, uh, when do you want to garden plant? Uh, per packet, um, what you want to do is um, just follow the instructions on your packet. Uh, these seeds have been grown over a multitude of years, so they understand, um, or rather the people that have packed the seeds, who sell the seeds, understand the ideal conditions uh, for the plant um, to, um, to succeed in your garden. And... Um, just follow the weather. Again, it's a labor of love. Um, it's a lot of checking. Uh, you will what you would do is um, when days start to lengthen and temperatures rises, especially after the the time of last frost, will be the time that you want to transplant um, to your garden. <laughs> it's ideal to plant your plants on an overcast day. Again, the sun, um, the plants have been very babied inside. Have been given. Uh, the ideal, uh, uh, genteel, very, very gentle um, light, uh, spectrum of light. Uh, you're now taking it outside to the sun, and an overcast day will minimize the amount of stress that the plant undergoes. And uh, once your uh, plant is gradually introduced to the outside weather, also called hardening off, you can then plant them directly into the ground. I'm not going to lie to you, um, some plants aren't going to make it uh, once they're in the ground. Either <laughs> the nature will get to them, either some form of disease or uh, very, very harsh rabbits will come and munch on them. Um, but then some other plants will, will, will survive uh, the trek to the wild. And um, you should also at this point congratulate yourself. Um, it's now up to uh, nature and luck for... Uh, the plants to uh, germinate and become successful outside. And um, now all you have to do is just wait for uh, the fruits of your labor to appear. And then uh, after this, uh, you can do something called seed starting, which uh, by the time uh, this is available um, within a couple of months in the fall is when you'll want to uh, seed start. Uh, actually, sorry about that, seed save, which will be discussed in another program. If you're experiencing any problems with your garden, 
to take a couple of photos with your smartphone or your camera and send it to the Illinois Master Gardeners. They will be more than happy and will quickly identify any problems that are occurring in your garden and uh, what you can do. Another resource is the Plant Clinic at the Morton Arboretum at plantclinic at mortonarb.org. Seed Starting by Barbara Ellis is one that we own at the library. Uh, this presentation is based on uh, Seed Starting by Barbara Ellis. And another item that we have, uh, the new Seed Starters Handbook by Nancy Bobell. Uh, in terms of seeds, um, I will say that seedsavers.org is an amazing um, company. Um, with uh, their packets that are easy to read and um, just well executed website. Um, another company that we usually use um, is called Rare Seeds. With that said, good luck, have fun, and uh, thank you.